Hey my friends, this is Earth the Fat Man, and this is your seat at the table. And I get a little message that says, Hi, CPO, you see detected, blah, blah, blah. So let's hope it doesn't crash again. Uh, this is Star, Star Wars Starfall, a adventure module for West, from West End Games for the Star Wars role-playing universe, and can probably apply to any, any version of Star Wars, the core books that you have. It says, In the twisted wreckage of a dying star destroyer, rebel heralds battle through detention cells, stormtroopers, and zero gravity to save an entire alliance fleet. So, let's take a look at this. Oh, no, we don't want that one. Look at this. There we go. Uh, this was published in 1989. Four years after I graduated. Introduction. Story of triumph and tragedy. The heroes and villains. Uh, a group of rebel agents find themselves in prison aboard a battle-torn Star Destroyer. With them is one of Lion's top engineers, Waylix Blissix, designer of the Victory Class Star Destroyer, has make their way through the ruined ship to Hangar Bay in the hopes of finding an escape craft. The only obstacle between them and freedom are legions of Imperial troops, 900 meters of twisted wreckage, and a ruthless Imperial captain bent on their destruction. Uh, the rebels will soon discover that their lives and the life of their charge are not the, all that hangs in the balance. Star Destroyer, recently pounded by a rebel strike fleet, is not as wounded as it appears. It's one last weapon to use against the returning Alliance ships it has itself. Set to self-destruct, the ravaged engines still contain enough power to obliterate the shattered Star Destroyer and fast approaching enemies. Can a handful of rebels save the unsuspecting fleet before time runs out? This is the challenge that must be faced in Starfall. Okay, there's one a couple of things about that. Um, this is one of those uh, rare opportunities Maybe not so rare, depending on how you as a GM might run things, but uh, I have ran this several times over the years, and one of the things I take great joy is the fact that the, the, the player characters are actually in the detention block on board as a Star Destroyer. So, aside from their clothing, they have no equipment, no weapons, no communications, no technology, no what, nothing. It's been confiscated, and that's that. So they have to begin and be clever and acquire as what the things that they need to do their thing as they go, and or as they as it's presented to them. So preparing to play. So they're setting up random characters and stuff, assuming you already have a group already established. Starfall combines a situation acquire a mix of skills to survive. The groups need the PCs, perception, knowledge, and technical skills, as well as more common combat and piloting skills. Make sure to upgrade, pull out section, victory, star destroyer, technical readout, difficulty numbers, and, and improvisation. Jim should adjust this adventure as ma to match the level of your particular group of players using difficulty number scale found in the group. So if your group, if you're using a pre, what they're saying is, depending on how capable your group is, how advanced are they, technology or uh, their characters are mid level or high level, adjust accordingly. If the players are experienced or veterans, even if they're playing novice, early level characters they're still clever adjust accordingly there's plenty of opportunities to make your make your make it fun and make it challenging at the same time venture background or public new public blah blah, blah. coming of the empire blah blah, blah 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 recent events Imperial Governor Den Wessex sent out holotapes throughout the galaxy, hoping at least one would reach a member of the Rebel Alliance. Tape contains a message from the Governor beseeching Waylix Blissix to take his offer of free passage and return to the Rebel Sector. His daughter, Wessex, was dying, and her only request is that she get to see her father one last time in order to make amends for the long years apart. If accepted, a ship would be waiting at Quinn Station to depart Blissix for the sad reunion. The Alliance High Command was naturally skeptical, but smelled like an obvious trap. But Waylix refused to be swayed. He needed to see his daughter and make things right. If he refused to take his chance, she would die. as she did die, he doubted he could live with himself. So, with due reservation, High, Lance High Command agreed to let him go. But there's no reason not to take a few precautions. After all, Blizzard was a valuable Lance, a good friend to anyone who knew him. It was for this reason that a small rebel team, i.e., your player characters, was sent to Bliss with Blizzard to Quinn Station. At Quinn, things got worse. The Victory Class Star Destroyer Subjector, a vessel currently assigned to the 
Relgum Sector waited patiently within dry dock. The ship's commander, Captain Koloff, greeted Blood Six and invited him aboard the massive vessel. Actually, the rebel team would admit not let the engineer go alone. Once aboard, the Star Destroyer, the rebels, and the old engineer were taken prisoner by stormtroopers and escorted to the detention block. Now, without weapons or equipment, rebel heroes feel the mighty vibrations that signal the destroyer's departure, etc. Adventure synopsis opens with the rebel player characters trapped within the Star Destroyer detention cell. All looks have lost from the sound of battle rock the ship. I know agents attack the subject subjector, damaging the vessel, providing a means to the rebels to free themselves. So basically the ship's badly beat up, pretty pretty heavily damaged, and there's power fluctuations and because of that the uh, characters find themselves released from the detention block. Although they're still in the detention block and have to approach and deal with it accordingly. So you got our main NPC characters here, Wayland Blix 6, Lara Wessex, uh, Captain Koloff, the Game Master's Guide to the VSD Subjugator, Handling the Curious Curious Player, the Guide, Personnel that you can find on Star Destroyer Troopers, General Purpose Command and Control Section, Engineering Section and their Conditions, Hangar Decks, He says here, engineers and technicians constantly bustle this area to, in an effort to keep the subjector's power online. Upon entering the engineering section, the PCs are likely to be perceived as technicians and asked to lend a hand in repairs. Star Destroyer troopers are posted to critical system stations only. Rebels should be able to wander this area somewhat freely, providing no one becomes suspicious. The engineering section is fairly dangerous, however, because violent equipment collapses, radiation leaks may occur without warning. For as long as the PCs remain in the area, random rolls should be made periodically to determine whether or not they're affected by these occurrences, etc., etc. Built on the Star Destroyer giant huge in power cell, the areas are irregularly designed. Many hidden corners, passageways, crawl spaces, and compartments in which to hide. Well, explicit can help the PCs find these places in moments of crisis. Near engine control core, many of the numerous catwalks necessary for gaining access to certain sections have collapsed or are hanging on by the merest threads. It allows for lots of opportunity. Hangar decks, probably the most heavily guarded area left in the ship. Living quarters, damaged areas, overall ship status is battle condition. Subjector is a battle alert condition. The mighty Star Destroyer is power vastly depleted. Operates in two of its six fire cells. All shields have been obliterated. Most weapons systems have been damaged or destroyed. The powerful deluxe flux the hyperdrive has suffered irreparable damage. Captain Koloff stirred most of the remaining energy into his weakened sublight engines, shutting down the rest completely in order to make the subject to appear more heavily damaged than it is. Inside the ship, chaos abounds. Many crew members are trapped or displaced. Koloff has paid them absolutely no attention. Blast doors are all across the ship automatically closed, sealing off many decks completely. Ship's internal comedy constantly crackles with orders, some of which may occasionally help the rebels. Strangely, most of the Star Destroyer uh, droid population is missing. Conversations pertaining to this rattle among the crews, and the occasional reference to this can be heard over the comm system. Despite the devastating damage and loss of life, the crew remains remarkably upbeat. They've seen their captain hold his own against the odds, and morale is high. Episode 1 Blind Man's Bluff. Venture begins the rebels held prisoner. The detention center explosions echo through the Star Destroyer and the lights go out. The area is cloaked in darkness. The rebels find themselves able to defeat the Imperial detention guards and their terror droid for access to weapons and equipment. Under the uh, cover of darkness, the PCs must now find the man they were assigned to protect. Wayland Blissix, they must move quickly as power may be restored at any moment and threat discovery seems intimate. So we start out with the adventure, a blackout, shot in the dark, a demon in the dark. First challenge is getting to him to the Wayland Blake Bliss X and then getting him out. Second challenge is getting out of the detention block. Out of the cells and into the fire. Beyond the control room, the di uh, doors lie a short hallway leads to the turbo lift tube. Since there is no power for this section, the Star Destroyer rebels must open the doors manually. This requires a very difficult strength roll, but up to three characters can combine. With a great effort, you get the doors open. And they have to decide where they want to go. 
door switches open, revealing an empty lighted corridor. It stretches to your right and left, and no dangers seem to be present. Somewhere in the shaft, another explosion sounds, but that is behind you as you let the door shut. Terry of the bridge cut away. Journey two, journey to the core. Summary, the rebels will fight flight from the detention block has led them to the upper levels of the engineering section. With light, with Bliss Wailix's help, they begin the journey to take across the heart of the Star Destroyer to the engine room core, but on the way they must circumvent collapsing engines and other hazards while trying to ascertain exactly what's going on outside the dying ship. Bailix's plan. We are in an access corridor just above engineering section. I believe we can find a computer terminal in one of the workstations. Should be a simple matter of getting into the computer and then determine just what we're up against. What the rest of you want to think? Burning engine. That's always nice. Accessing the computer. Trip to the core. Discovering the plot to blow up the Star Destroyer and take out the, the rebels' returning fleet. And what do we do about it? Vent two meeting Captain Korloff. Opening script for the players. Templates for some of the MDCs they're going to meet. Just the exterior of the damaged Star Destroyer. Landing bay was on the previous page. Landing bay. Some computer monitor information. Event 3, back to school. Said, four long rebels reach a black blocked corridor. An open blaster leads to what seems to be a repair facility. Racks of engine parts line the far wall, dismantled sub like modulators lie on central table. Other access to the shop leads to seems to lead to a clean corridor. The only question is which way the PCs want to go. Access to more equipment. Tools. Opportunities. Dealing with stormtroopers. A welcome reprieve. Large chamber is obviously a medical station. Appears to be strained under the weight of the ship's full castle. These 12 back tanks fill the center of the chamber. Three of these have been shattered due to damage. The beds and examinations are filled as well as other wounded and crew members spill into the core out of corridors. You look around, a frantic medical droid pops out from behind a tank and says, None of my assistants have answered my duty alert, so you'll just have to wait until I get around to you. So many wounded, so many dead. Droids programmed to tell the sick or wounded from healthy, not rebel from imperial, etc. Uh, stun damage. Episode 3 Engineer Engine Core Attack. Summary The rebels finally reach the engine control core, but their plan to turn the self destruct program against call office fails due to the unexpected development. The battle to escape the core provides and proves deadly in time, and itself turns out against the rebels when they discover yet another clue by accessing the Star Destroyer's damaged computer banks. Engine control core, the bridge, another computer clue. At the controls, the trap. Creative escapes. Oilex suggests any. Oilex snaps his finger and shouts, of course. He grabs one of the more technically oriented rebels and explains, We can change the energy field created by the crisscrossing beams. You must manipulate the computer just so to alter the energy into a repulsor left field. Then we can leap into the shaft itself using the turbo lift to escape. Yeah, that's one way of getting out of a broken turbo lift. Uh, episode 4, A Dangerous Trek. Summary from the escape from the computer control core leads rebels to a new set of hazards and adventures. First obstacles encounter, they begin their dangerous trek as a deadly power cell storm that engulfs the lower levels of the ship. Brief rest in a supply room and recover, uncovers more of Korloff's plan and gives the rebels their best hope for escape. The location of a shuttle being prepared for departure. The location is in a far distant hangar bay, and to get there, the heroes must get past renegade droids, make their way through the twisted underside of the damaged vessel, and survive a zero gravity fight with yet more stormtroopers. Oh, meeting T3 here, the extra check, so we know what's going on here. Uh, the Great Escape, Zero G Battle, Episode 5 A Clash with Korloff. With time running out, a squad of angry stormtroopers behind them, the rebels reach the hangar bays, but I realize they are on the wrong one. To get to one level down to the bay they want, the rebels must face perhaps the most deadly challenge of this venture. They must face off Korloff, who awaits them in an ATSD scout walker. 
I fear the approaching rebel task where hang is in the balance. So hangar big twelve. Conflict with the nut job captain using dueling ATSTs and a kinda shaky star destroyers. Starship Bay yeah, that's works. Uh, the ATST parking against far wall can be reached in two rounds, takes additional round to climb in and power it up. Each ATST holds the crew with two scale rules for walkers and characters. The final exams. Cole left this, left this gift for the brave rebels. So you provide him with ATSTs in order to meet him on the field of battle. So we are good enough. Yeah, so this is an Imperial fleet captain who's very experienced in piloting ATSTs, especially fighting in his own ship cargo bay, or landing bay. Makes sense. Episode 6, The Final Escape. A summary. Hangar Bay G-12. The rebels must defeat the final guards. Deal with the mysterious Imperial officer. Warn the approaching rebel fleet to turn back. Escape the Star Destroyer before it explodes. Hold on to your flight. Helmet says time becomes true enemy of the, in the closing minutes of Starfall. And also, yeah. ATST damage table. There we go. Can you get to the shuttle? Can you get it out? Can you escape before it blows up? Operation Starfall concludes your subspace sub communists crack a life. A strong, calm voice addresses you. This is Starfall leader calling Imperial Shuttle. As everything you told us seems to be correct, including the recent destruction of Subject Hater, please feel free to come aboard our flagship as personal guests of the Alliance. May the Force be with you, Captain Tori. Out. The rewards on return to the base pieces are met by General Dodonna, who promotes each of them. Those already holding a rank are promoted to the next step up. With those without a rank are bestowed the rank of lieutenant for saving his silly old hide. Waylux signs a special toy for each PC. Finding the best skill for each player character. Dr. Bliss is while the device augmented by 1D. So for a PC whose best skill is blaster, it might be a special sight. For a PC with a high starship repair, it might be a nifty new tool. Be creative with the device, but remember it's only given a uh, chosen skill by 1D. Grant each player between 7 and 12 skill points for the successful completion. Reward extra force points to those who showed extreme courage and ingenuity throughout the adventure, as well as replacing the force points spent. Hoorah. So that, my friends, is a brief take on the module Starfall by Ron Jenkins. I said these are old but they're still good they're still great the material's awesome you might need to adjust it for a modern set of rule sets for star wars or other sci-fi based rules that you prefer but if you get your hands on these things they're always extra interesting for your shelf if no other reason than to reading and gaining ideas so anyway this is rick the fat man and this is your seat at the table